Hi. In this video, I want to build up on the uh, last two videos that I've done around Bruno. This time we are building up on the scripting element and we are automating quite a lot of the OAuth2 authorization code grant, which is unfortunately not completely automatable, automatable within Bruno. So we are doing the most to make it easy for the users until OAuth2 support is natively provided, which as I've learned is maybe going to happen soon because uh, there is an a coding session uh, that uh, Anoop is going to be part of. So the creator of Bruno is going to take that challenge up quite soon. And until then you can use the script. We're doing the very same thing as we did in the last one. So we are first um, going to do it uh, quite manually within Bruno itself. And then we are building up a script. We're copying over that script and that will automate most of the elements that you need to do. And with that, let's keep it short and let's jump into it. So let's start as we did the last time. First, we're trying to do it manually. With manually, I mean, we're trying to do the steps without any sort of scripting within Bruno. So let's take a look. I already prepared it because it is quite similar to what we've done before. This time we are going to take another sample and in that sample, let's just try to send a request. We're getting an unauthorized, but we don't have an authorization based on client credentials, but using authorization code. For the authorization code flow, we need two elements. First, we need to authorize ourselves. From that, we are receiving a code and that code uh, needs to be exchanged for a bearer token. So let's take a look at how that would work. The step that we right now can't do in Bruno is the authorization code. Let's open a browser and let's get ourselves an authorization code first. Within the browser, you need to call the authorized endpoint of the OAuth server you're calling. So in this case, what we're going to provide might be a little bit different for your use case is the client ID, the response type being code and the redirect URI. Calling this will, as I'm already logged in, redirect to the defined redirect URI. And in this case, add it with the query perimeter code and the code that we need to copy over into Bruno. Back in Bruno, we can do something quite similar to what we did with the client credentials flow. So we are creating this time a post request. That post request has as authorization again, the client ID and client secret. And this time we need a body. That body contains the grant type authorization code, the respective code that you just got. So let me copy it over and the redirect URI that you entered when getting this code, at least if that's required in your environment. Now, if we are submitting this, uh, probably is timed out, unexpected token, I copied something too much. Now, where did I go off the rails? Let me quickly check. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the other way around. So the problem is, <laughs> The expression needs to go here and the name, let's put it that way. <laughs> there are token, so this, this is how it needs to be. And then we can put this back into there are token as well. <laughs> All right, and let's do it this way. Now definitely, yeah, let's see if it's entered, the uh, code is invalid and I need to grab a new one, but yeah. The uh, authorization code is invalid. Then let me just quickly grab a new one. Let's copy it in. And there we go. Now this time we got the access token back and then everything is the same. So we've got our collection. The collection has the bearer token. In the sample request, we can simply reuse it and then we can query our data. If the service would be available. Now in this case, the database behind it is right now shut down. So that's why it's not working. But in general, we would get the data. So the issue is not anymore that we don't have an authentication, but the um, issue is that the service itself is unavailable. Now, what does that mean? We can take the same approach as we did last time, automate a few steps, but this time we need a few more variables and we need to set up something slightly different. In this case, what we need to set up is we need to have a redirect URI. We need to have the authorization code. We need to have a different grant type, but besides that, it's quite similar. Now, what we can't do, at least to my knowledge, is we can't um, automate this step of uh, getting the code yet. 
but for that we can at least provide our users a little bit help, meaning in case of a failure. The reason for that is most likely, at least at certain points, that the authorization code is not valid anymore. So what we can do is we can at least generate the respective URL for getting the authorization code and throw an error message containing that. In this case, the user could simply copy it out, get a new code and put in that code again. And that's what we're going to do next, but this time using Visual Studio Code because that inbuilt editor is a little bit annoying if you have something more complex to create. So in this case, I've opened Visual Studio Code and let's just create it here and later on copy it over to our script section in Bruno itself. What do we need? In this case, we need the same three libraries that we also needed last time, meaning Axios for doing HTTP requests, B2OA for the Base64 encoding, and Moment for better date handling. Now let's continue. Again, let's call it simply authenticate client. Let's define the variables that we are expecting or the configuration again. And this time we have quite a few more variables. So in this case, we have the token endpoint variable name where we are doing the token exchange. So that's the URL that you've seen in the post request. We've got the authorized endpoint variable name which is what we're using for creating the error message and opening that in the browser. So that's the step that you've seen in the Chrome browser. Then we've got the client ID and client secret as we had the last time. Same with the bearer token and two more variables, in this case, the authorization code that we can then pick out of the environment so that a user can easily enter it and the redirect URI, which is also used when creating the URL and doing the a call to the token endpoint. What we do next is a same check that we also did the last time, meaning we're checking the expiry difference in milliseconds. So if the validity is over a minute and if the environment is equal to the environment we've last requested, then we can simply return the token itself and we don't need to request a new one. If not, we need to get the environment variables again. So it's uh, the same behavior as we, we did last time, only that now we've got um, a few variables more. So we've got the token endpoint, the authorized endpoint, the client ID, the client secret, and the redirect URI. Okay. And again, we're checking are they filled? The same check as we did in the last video. And if they are not filled, then we are again throwing an error message basically writing out which variables are missing. And that way the user knows, hey, look, uh, something is not configured correctly. I need to change that. Now, as a next step, we're checking on the authorization code. So we're checking, is it provided? And we are constructing the actual authorization code URL, meaning we're taking the values of the variables that we've now checked, and we're constructing this URL that I've opened previously in the Chrome browser. This is done so that we can, in case we don't have the authorization code, throw an error message and point the user directly to that authorization code URL so that he doesn't need to search it. He can simply open it up. Now, in case we have all of that, we are now defining a new function and that function will later on really do the token exchange. It will take the authorization code and exchange that authorization code for the charge token or bearer token that we then later on can use for the calls itself. For this, we'll need the client ID, the client secret, the token, and the authorization code that we now have, plus the redirect URI. If we get this token, then we store that token and the expiry date. This is the same thing we did last time. And last but not least, we're setting the environment so that we can check is the bearer token that we have right now for the environment that we are looking at or was it requested for that environment. Now, in case of an error, we are again throwing out the error message, but this time the most likely error, at least to my experience here, is that we don't have the authorization code or rather the authorization code now is invalid. So we are also including the authorization code URL in this error message so that if it is still filled, we are throwing the message here and we are basically again providing the authorization code to the user. Next, let's define the helper functions that we've just referenced until now. So one of them is the calculate token expiry in milliseconds. 
it's again quite similar to something we had last time right in the coding. So we are getting the current time, we're getting the expiry time or the current time if it's not filled, and we are getting the difference out between these two in milliseconds. And then we need the helper function for exchanging the authorization code for the token. And this is our Axios post to the token endpoint, basically a manual request that we've previously done in Bruno itself. And here the body is a little bit larger. So we've got the ground type of the authorization code. We are including the code itself in the redirect URI. And then for the authorization, it's the very same as the last time. So we've got our basic auth and we've got a content type of form URL encoded. Then we need one more thing. We need to store the token and the expiry. So here we simply take the two information pieces put in and we're setting them to the respective variables. So doing the same as we did last time. And now we can prepare our authenticate client. We need to define our configuration with the respective variable names that will be included in our environment. And here we are simply taking the logical terms. All right, and with that, we can already jump back to Bruno and copy over the script. Okay, so back in Bruno, what we need to do is we need to copy in the script. So let me quickly switch to the collection. In the collection, let me move to the scripting pane. And as pre-request, I'm simply copying over what I just created. All right, let's save that. And let's hope for the best. If we go into our sample, we should get an error message as we haven't defined any sort of environment variables right now. So let's see what happens. Okay, missing required environment variables, token URL, authorized URL, client ID, client secret, redirect URL. Let's define them step by step. We can take most of them out of the respective call to the JAW token. So let's prepare an environment. Let's configure one. Let's create one. Let's call it development. And on development, we want to have our token URL. We have the client ID, client secret which is a secret. We've got the redirect URI and we've got the authorization code that should fail the next time. All right, let's save that. Did I miss one? Token URL authorize. This one is still missing. So let's create this one as well. Okay. Then let's take the values from our JAW token request that we constructed in the beginning. The auth token can go in here for the token URL. Then we've got our redirect URI, that one go in here. Then we've got our client ID, which go in here. We've got our client secret, which will go into the secret. And we've got our authorized URL, which I can simply copy over. So it is this one. So let me copy it in. And there we go. We have everything but the authorization code. So let's do a request. Okay. No authorization code provided. Navigate to the URL, the URL that's relevant for me and grab the code. So let me provide it by getting a code and now I can copy in the authorization code up here. And with that, I should be able to get a request. And we are back to 503 service unavailable because the database is not there. And there you go. You've got the OAuth2 authorization code grant automated at least as far as possible within right now. Now, if everything is going well, somewhere after the 15th, uh, Anoop, the creator of Bruno, will have OAuth2 implemented, which would be really nice. If not, then this is a suitable workaround until then. With the aim of making Bruno easy to use for users that are not that technical, I've got a few other videos planned. But the next one will probably be one around what do I think right now are gaps within Bruno? Where could it improve? And what will be feature requests of mine? And with that, I would say bye-bye. And if you've got any questions, just ping them down below.